What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Russo Mod. In the last episode, you saw us start to install the interior and the steering column and our brake setup that we're going to use on our 1950 Willys wagon that we're actually putting a Jeep Wrangler frame underneath and powering it with a Volkswagen TDI diesel engine. Now, in a previous episode, you saw us pull the injection pump off of our TDI to get it rebuilt and we ended up getting it back so that way we can reinstall it in this episode and get this thing running for the first time. So let's get to it. All right, so now that we got everything pretty much lined up on the body to the frame, we're going to lift the body back off and we can reinstall our injection pump, torque, the flywheel and the torque converter and the transmission and everything, bolt that into place for good. And then we're going to start doing our radiator, intercooler, transmission cooler, stuff like that. So that way, when we put the body back down, it'll be ready to go and we won't have to pull it off anymore. So hopefully this is one of our last times that we're pulling this body off. And then we'll, next time we put it down, all we'll have to do is connect fuel lines, connect brake lines, intercooler, radiator stuff, wire it, and it should be ready to go at that point. So hopefully we pull this off for the last time. All right, so now that we have the body up, we are going to pull the transmission back off and then we're gonna reinstall the pump and then torque everything down and then put it back so that way it's in there for good. All right, so now we have the body off and everything, we're going to upgrade the intake manifold and the turbo on this. So if you notice the intake manifold on this currently is facing the wrong direction and our turbo has a little bit of shaft play. So we're gonna upgrade the turbo to this KO3, KO4 hybrid. Apparently this is one of the better ones to work with the 1.9. And then we have a different intake manifold that's facing forward instead of facing backwards. So this one's supposed to flow a lot more. So we're going to install both of these that while we have the body off so it's a lot easier to get to everything and then we can install our injection pump all right so now i'm going to begin by pulling off the old turbo and the old intake manifold and we're going to also detach the transmission because it's just sitting there it's just for a mock-up because we have our diesel conversion specialties adapter plate and it has a converter and everything else that's in the kit so we're going to disconnect all of this stuff tighten it down for the final time so that way whenever we put the body back on that's the last time that we can put it on so we can get all this stuff detached and ready to go for the final installation Now that we got that out of the way, we can torque our diesel conversion specialties adapter plate to spec with the provided instructions and we should be good to go. All right, well, we got our new injection pump in that's rebuilt. So now we're going to stick it back on, time everything, and then we can start pulling this thing apart, torque everything down and putting it back together. All right, now we got our Volkswagen Tech Pat here, so he's gonna help us install our injection pump, get it all timed and ready to go back in the motor. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the fuel lines on. It's pretty simple. It's like a puzzle. If you don't remember where they go, stick them on there and see which one gets close. And then if it doesn't fit, go to the next one. All right, so while Patrick is putting the injector lines on to the injection pump, I'm cleaning up the head and getting ready to put the new intake manifold on. Now this intake manifold we just got off eBay, but it helps with this swap because it points towards the front and it's quite a bit bigger than the original one that was on there. So it should add a little bit of power as well. All right, gonna put the new turbo on. Now I didn't explain this too much in the video, but I just wanted to let you guys know if you guys are thinking about using this turbo on your TDI swap, make sure you put the restrictor in that is provided in the kit as well. Uh -huh. Is it uh -huh. lined up with the little key? No. Now that we've got all of our new stuff on, we can go ahead and set the timing for our TDI engine. So we locked the crankshaft in the right spot, we locked the injection pump, and we locked the camshaft so that way everything's in time. That's good. 
now that we got the pulleys and everything <laughs> on, we can go ahead and install the timing belt so that way we can lock everything down and hopefully everything is good to go. We did install a new timing belt tensioner and a new timing belt so we won't have any issues because we are planning on driving this thing on Hot Rod Power Tour so we don't want to have any issue whenever we're far from home driving this thing across country. So now that we got everything timed up, we're going to give it one rotation to make sure it's not interfering with any valves hitting pistons or anything like that so we know that we're pretty close and we can start assembling everything else. So now all we got to do is put on our valve cover, tighten everything down, and we should be ready to fire this thing up for the first time. With all this new stuff installed, our motor is starting to look much more complete than it was before. We got a new turbo, a new injection pump, a new timing belt, new timing belt tensioner, a new intake, and everything else should be ready to go so that way it should be all refreshed and we won't have any issues going down in the future here. Hopefully all this stuff is a big upgrade than what it was whenever it was stock. All right, well, we got the pump and we got the new turbo and the intake on. So the issue with the old motor was we it would run, but whenever you hit the throttle here, it wouldn't accelerate. So we're going to test this one out and see if it works. So we got fuel hooked to it. And then on this motors, you only need one uh, solenoid switch for the pump to kick on. So you just put that on and then we hooked our starter and flywheel and everything up. Everything's torqued, so should be good to go. So we're gonna try to run this thing real quick. All right, so now we wanna try to fire this thing up. So we're just gonna hook a little carburetor fuel pump to it and our boat tank that we've used a hundred times trying to get other stuff started on the channel. And we're gonna try to fire this thing up for the first time. So it's gonna take a lot of cranking and a lot of fuel because we're trying to fill the injection pump up for the first time since it's been rebuilt. So it's gonna take a lot of cranking. Now, if you notice that it's spinning over a little bit slowly, it's because we didn't have the proper spacer installed for the starter. Now, you do have to put a little bit of a spacer in there, like a small block or something like that, to offset the flywheel. So, once we figured that out, it ended up fixing the issue and it spun over a lot faster than it did now. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot, a lot better. better. Yeah. yeah. No fuel on that one yet? Now, what Patrick's doing is he's cracking loose all the injectors so we can make sure that they're getting fuel. And then once they get fuel, we'll tighten them up and they should be ready to go and have plenty of fuel in the lines. I was about ready to pop. It's trying to. Oh. <laughs> it's so close. Now another thing Patrick is doing is he's moving the injection pump by hand to try to get the timing of the injection pump a little closer so that it'll fire for the first time. It takes a lot of fuel and a lot of air moving through the injection pump to bleed all of it out. So we also wanna make sure that the pump timing is correct. So we're just nudging it a little bit so that way we can get that dialed in enough to fire and then we can dial it in once it starts running. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the middle. Better. Yeah, it definitely was running smoother. Yeah, it's better. And our TDI motor is officially running. It runs pretty good. We still have to dial in some injection timing and stuff like that, but it runs enough so that we can move on to the rest of the project. So that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also, don't forget to check out our Patina Party Car Show that we're having August 13th at Maryland International Raceway. We're going to have a bunch of cool cars like the Jeep, the C10, the Rambler, and a bunch of other Rusto Mod builds there and a bunch of other cars just like them there. So if you have an awesome patina car or any classic car, bring it down to the Maryland International Raceway on August 13th. So we'll hope to see you there and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching.